So hi, uh, in this video, we're gonna walk through the balance sheet of Hasbro. Uh, Hasbro is a giant toy company, uh, one of the largest in the world. Um, they make Monopoly and Transformers and, um, and other toys. So we're gonna take a look at how they present their balance sheet. Um, and we're gonna learn through this example, I hope, uh, how to read the balance sheet and focus on what's important and what the various lines mean. So the first thing we need to realize is that similar to the income statement, the balance sheets uh, that you'll see uh, from company to company are not all identical, uh, but they do share similar characteristics and that's what we're gonna focus on. We need to be comfortable with the variations that we see from balance sheet to balance sheet and not let the differences among them confuse us. Um, and so uh, getting a good understanding of what's the same across all financial statements I think is helpful. Um, so the first thing we need to understand is that all balance sheets have three basic sections and a defining calculation. The sections are assets, liabilities, and equity. And in this way, all balance sheets are an expression of the accounting equation. The accounting equation is assets is equal to liabilities and equity. And we can see that Hasbro's balance sheet begins with assets. Assets are the things that a company owns. And Hasbro lists a variety of assets. These are the things that they own. Uh, and we're gonna look at them in more detail shortly. And this section totals uh, $5.26 billion in total assets. Now the next two sections show where they got the money to pay for those assets. In the first section after assets, it lists all of their liabilities, uh, which total $3.5 billion. Uh, and liabilities are claims against these assets. This is what the company owes to other people and businesses. And in the final section, shareholders equity, um, which is the same as owner's equity you might see on other balance sheets, um, it, this totals $1.75 billion. And we're gonna notice that in fact, uh, liabilities and equity, if they are added together, are the same as total assets. Um, and this is what we mean by balance. So here are the numbers that are in balance. It's $5.262 billion in total assets, and that would be equal to, uh, to the total of our liabilities, $3.5 billion, plus the total of our equity, $1.754 billion. So everything is in balance and all balance sheets you see are gonna be uh, structured like this with three primary sections uh, and they'll be in balance expressing the accounting equation. So now let's take a closer look at the detail that Hasbro is giving us on their balance sheet. Now, the first thing we need to notice is the name. Uh, now, it, it's not always called a balance sheet. Sometimes uh, you'll see it called uh, a statement of financial position or something else, uh, but regardless of the title, um, the accounting equation doesn't change um, and assets are always gonna be equal to liabilities plus equity. The next thing we need to notice is the date. Uh, the date is a point in time. This is uh, un unlike the income statement, which was over a period of time, such as a year. Um, this is a specific, so the balance sheet we're looking at is for December 30, 2018. And this is a snapshot of all the things that Hasbro owned on that day, that's their assets, and an accounting of where they got the money to pay for it, either in liabilities or equity, as of that particular day. The next thing to notice is units. And in this case, Hasbro tells us that the statement is expressed in thousands. They could have expressed it in whole dollars or millions or even billions, um, and they could have expressed it in any currency. Um, but it's important to check the units so that we can understand what we're looking at. In this case, we understand that this statement is in thousands. So we can imagine three more zeros at the end of each number. And so we would read the first line uh, of 2018 cash and cash equivalents as 1,182,371,000. Okay, so now let's look at the line items on the balance sheet in some detail. Uh, we've already seen that we have three big sections, assets, liabilities, and equity, and we can observe, I think, the first section, assets, is further subdivided um, into uh, current assets and other assets. This first group called current assets are the things that the company owns which will be consumed in the period. And the first asset that's listed is cash and cash equivalents. We've already taken a quick look at this, and this represents the amount of cash that Hasbro had on hand on December 30th, 2018. Now the next day, on December 31st, the amount of cash could have been more or less. Uh, we don't know. And uh, similarly, the day before on December 29, it also could have been different. All we know is on this specific day, December 30, 2018, Hasbro had $1.18 billion of cash and equivalents on hand. So now what's an equivalent? Well, uh, an equivalent is a cash 
uh, asset that can be easily converted to cash. Um, these are usually things such as short-term investments with maturities of 90 days or less. Um, they could be things like uh, treasury bills, uh, short-term government bonds, money market holdings, um, etc. And uh, it's equivalent to cash, uh, we say, if it is very safe and very liquid so that it can be converted to cash nearly immediately with little or no risk. And it's not a coincidence uh, that we're listing cash and cash equivalents first. Um, in fact, the current assets are usually listed in order of their liquidity. This means in how long, uh, in the order of how long it takes to convert that particular asset into cash. Now, the next one on our list is accounts receivable. After cash, the next most liquid asset is accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is the money that customers owe the company for goods and services already purchased. In this case, Hasbro has sold $1.18 billion of toys to their customers, such as Walmart, Target, and Amazon, um, and for which they have not yet been paid. So it's common in many industries to extend, to extend trade terms to customers, and instead of collecting cash immediately when the company provides the goods or services, um, they tend to allow 30, 60, or sometimes even 90 days for customers to pay. While, the cust while, while Hasbro is waiting for their payment, uh, the amount is recorded uh, as an accounts receivable. Next is inventory. Inventory is simply the toys that Hasbro has produced that are ready to be sold, as well as the raw materials like plastic and cardboard to make more toys. Prepaid expenses are the things that the company has already paid for but has not yet received or consumed. So an example here could be rent or insurance or property tax, things that are billed in advance or billed in quarterly installments uh, tend to show up here. So for example, uh, Hasbro could have paid their rent for next month already and, uh, and that, that will be consumed uh, over the next month, uh, but it's recorded today as a prepaid expense. And so that brings us uh, to total current assets. And we call them current because these are the things that the company owns that can be converted uh, to cash or consumed within one year. Now looking at non-current assets, property, plant, and equipment. Uh, these are the physical manufacturing plants, the headquarters building that they have in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, uh, distribution warehouses, even things such as uh, forklifts and trucks. Um, they could even be 3D printers or other specialized prototyping equipment that Hasbro uses in running its business. These are uh, tangible physical assets that Hasbro owns. The next item is goodwill. Now, goodwill is something that usually happens when one company acquires another. Uh, the goodwill amount is the amount that the acquiring company paid over the book value of the target firm. So, for example, if Hasbro paid $100 million for a company that had only $50 million in assets and an additional $10 million in liabilities, or uh, in other words, a book value of $40 million, which is 50 minus 10, then it would, re, it would record the difference between what it paid, $100 million, and the book value, $40 million, uh, as uh, uh, $60 million of goodwill. So in this case, uh, Hasbro is telling us that over the years, they have accumulated $485 million in goodwill. Now, the next item here is other intangibles. Uh, intangible assets are assets that are not physical in nature. Uh, these are things such as patents and trademarks and copyrights. It could also include licensing agreements, proprietary software, algorithms, uh, website domains, and anything else that has value to the company but is not physical. Uh, goodwill uh, is also an intangible asset. It's not physical. Um, and sometimes uh, you'll see these grouped together on balance sheets uh, and it'll be labeled something such as goodwill and other intangible assets. Now there's a grouping called other assets. Uh, this is a group of assets that don't neatly fit into other categories that we've discussed. So it could be things such as uh, deferred tax assets, long-term prepaid expenses, and sometimes it'll include um, prepaid pension expenses or um, loans to the officers that are not expected to be paid back within the year. So if you want to know specifically what's in, a, um, in an other bucket on a balance sheet, um, the best thing to do is to read the notes to the financial statement that will be included in the 10K, and you'll usually get a very good description of what specific assets they're bundling in other.
And so that brings us now to total assets. Uh, assets, of course, are the things that the company owns. And assets uh, for Hasbro are totaling on this day uh, $5.26 billion. The question now that we have is where did they get the money to buy $5.26 billion worth of stuff? And this is what the next two sections tell us. So in the next video, we'll look more closely at liabilities and shareholders' equity.